I first read this book about uh, 25 years ago, and I think that's about when it first came out. Uh, it's called Mouse, A Survivor's Tale. It's a graphic novel um, depicting the author, Art Spiegelman's father, uh, and his experiences during the Holocaust, um, the period leading up to it and afterwards, the after effects of the Holocaust, hence A Survivor's Tale. Um, it's interesting in that as a graphic novel you could take all kinds of artistic license and one of them was uh, all the different nationalities of the people that appeared in the two novels uh, appeared as animals. Uh, the Jewish characters appeared as mice and predictably enough the German ones appeared as cats. Uh, American characters appeared as mutts, I guess that's because of the supposed mixed blood of Americans. Uh, lovable but mixed blood nonetheless. Um, and so on. Every uh, nationality appeared as a different animal. One of the interesting themes that goes through the entire thing, and I think that it goes through the entirety of uh, what we would call Holocaust literature, is the existential guilt felt by the survivors. Why did we survive while well, so many other good people died? What, why are we so special? Some people survived just by happenstance. Others survive because they manage to adapt to the situation inside uh, the, hum uh, the human manufactured hell that was places like Auschwitz, Birkenau, and uh, places like that. They managed to actually figure out how the system worked, and they didn't really so much go along with it, but they managed to adapt to it, i.e. they got into camp politics, they did favors for other people, they betrayed other inmates, that sort of thing, and they managed to survive. And it deals with that. This book deals with that in rather um, rather candid ways. Uh, it sort of says that sometimes you're put in a position where it's you or the other guy. You're innocent, he's innocent. One of you has to go uh, and uh, pay the piper, as it were. Somebody's going to have to go and... Uh, uh, by the farm, and who's it going to be? You or him? And, of course, humans being humans, they say, him, not me. Uh, and then, of course, they're dogged with the guilt of that moment for the rest of their lives. But it also deals with the fact that that guilt is normal, and it's in a certain ex to a certain extent, it's the sign of a clear, or at least a decent, human conscience. You feel guilty about having to make those moral choices, Sophie's choice, as it were, even as, um, in many ways, you didn't really have any other choice. Uh, Holocaust literature is uh, filled with things like this. And that kind of existential guilt, if you ask me, is uh, something that underpins antinatalism. Um, just by being here, it's sort of a mark against us, because one of our biological imperatives is to procreate, but to do that, we're supposedly, according to the uh, asymmetry argument or uh, the imposition argument, by doing that, we are somehow uh, committing a sin, a harm, a violation uh, upon something else. We are what we are, and everything that we are seems to, in, uh, seems to assume that we're going to procreate. Uh, we're uh, that's just part of how we are biologically. If we look around us at the entirety of our uh, experience, all sentient things procreate. We're asked to accept the original sin of that nature, of our nature, i.e. we need to procreate, but to procreate is a violation. A pro uh, it's an imposition. It's a crime visited upon something else. So it's the same kind of existential dilemma that is raised in uh, Mouse here uh, by Art Spiegelman. I encourage anyone to read this if they haven't. It's an awesome bit of uh, uh, literature and, I would say, art. Um, how do we deal with that? How do we deal with the fact that just to be ourselves, we have to do things that are morally questionable? Um, I, I just uh, drank my breakfast this morning, and it contains things uh, such as... Um, elements of plants uh, that I have to ingest. I've just killed these plants. These plants who were um, no uh, threat to me whatsoever. They didn't wish me any ill whatsoever. I walked over, uh, bought these things at the grocery store, but they'd been picked off a plant somewhere in Asia or whatever, um, and uh, crushed up so that I could ingest them. Um, I have to live off death. It's just part of my nature. How much guilt should I feel for that? How much guilt should I feel for procreating when that too is part of my nature? How much guilt should I feel for my inability to overcome my nature, which is to procreate? 
Um, it's an interesting dilemma, and again, it goes back to the uh, Adam and the apple, um, and uh, how we uh, got ourselves kicked out of the Garden of Eden. We uh, were in a perfect place, and then we decided to look beyond that perfect place, and boom, suddenly our eyes were opened and we were out of it. We were out of the perfect place into a not quite hellish existence, but certainly not as heavenly as it once was. Whose fault is that? How much of our existence and our nature is our own fault? And how much incumbency upon each and every one of us is there to overcome our own nature? And how much guilt should we feel if we are unable to overcome our nature? A very important series of questions when you're dealing with things like the asymmetry argument and the imposition of life. Just how bad is it to, uh, to impose new life? And how much should one condemn people for doing it? I think you know my answer. Thank you.